Hello friends, welcome to the first episode of Simulation Comedy, a Sims 4 build series where I recreate sets from my favorite sitcoms of all time. Today we're going to be recreating Mary Richards' first apartment from the Mary Tyler Moore Show. In each one of these episodes, we are going to be doing a brief history of the series that I'm focusing on, and then we'll move on to discussing the build itself. Before we get started, please be sure to subscribe and hit that like button if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. The Mary Tyler Moore Show premiered on CBS back in September of 1970, Saturday, September 19th at 9.30 p.m. to be exact. The show premiered four years after the Dick Van Dyke Show went off the air. For those of you who may not know, Mary played Dick Van Dyke's TV wife, Laura Petrie. The show followed Mary Richards, a 30-something single working woman who lands herself a job as the associate producer of the evening news at channel WJM-TV in Minneapolis after splitting up from her boyfriend of two years. She settles into a cozy little apartment, the one which we are recreating here today, where she then meets her upstairs neighbor, Rhoda Morgenstern, played by Valerie Harper, who would go on to become Mary's BFF. The show lasted for seven seasons and starred various other legendary actors, such as Ed Asner, who portrayed Mary's boss, Lou Grant. If you're in your 20s like me, then you may know Ed Asner from movies such as Elf, the Disney Pixar film Up, or more recently, the Netflix series Cobra Kai. And of course, Betty White, who was introduced as the happy homemaker Sue Ann Nivens in season four and went on to become a series regular and just tear it up in Hollywood for the rest of her existence on this earth. Now let's move on to some fun facts about the show. In 1996, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts released their own version of the show's iconic theme song, Love is All Around, which was originally written and performed by singer-songwriter Sonny Curtis. And this version was recently used in the first trailer for DC's animated series, Harley Quinn. Now, if you've seen the show, then you may have noticed that Mary's hair is much darker in the first season than it is in the rest of the series. This is because in the first season, Mary wore a dark brown wig. According to the internet, this was to make her appear a little less like Laura Petrie from The Dick Van Dyke Show. But in my personal opinion, I think she looks more like Laura Petrie with that wig in the first season than she does with her own hair in the rest of the series. One of the many reasons why The Mary Tyler Moore Show is such an important part of television history is because of how independent Mary Richards was. Despite having many romantic interests throughout the show, the character was never married and remained focused on her career, which was quite a big deal for the time. And finally, there are actually three spin-offs of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Rhoda, which ran from 1974 to 1978, Phyllis, which ran from 1975 to 1977, and finally Lou Grant, which was a one-hour drama that ran from 1977 to 1982. I do I remember seeing a little bit of Rhoda when I was a kid, but I have never seen Phyllis or Lou Grant. I know both of those shows are on DVD though, so maybe one day I'll track those down and give them a watch. Now let's talk a little bit about this build, shall we? Building this set was quite the challenge. It's always really hard to create a build that resembles a TV or film set because obviously these sets are not built the way a building would be in real life. A lot of sitcoms, especially older ones, have all sorts of weird walls at different angles so that they're able to get the right shots. But those angles are what made it really difficult for me to put together something that resembled Mary's apartment because the walls in her apartment just don't make any sense at all and it kind of hurt my brain trying to figure out how they worked. But thankfully I did find a floor plan someone had made of Mary's apartment which is what I followed and it did help me a lot. I scaled it down because if you've ever followed a floor plan while building building in The Sims 4, it usually comes out a lot bigger than necessary, so I did tweak the scale a little bit. But I used a combination of the floor plan along with the photos from episodes of the show to do my recreation of the apartment. So if you're someone who knows your Mary Tyler more, then you'll probably notice that there are a lot of elements from various seasons put together. And that's where it got a little tricky, because I swear the apartment changes in every single episode. I looked at the photos, watched episodes, and there's always some detail that's different. Like there ends up being a yellow end table that I put beside the couch later on, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out where to put that because it's always moved to a different spot in the photos. Sometimes it's in the corners, sometimes it's against one of the chairs instead of the couch. So eventually with little details like that, I just had to pick where I wanted it to go. So there were two elements to this build that were slightly disappointing to me, and that's the wall paneling and the windows. So the wallpaper is custom content. You'll see me using a lot of CC throughout this video because it'd be very hard to achieve this kind of look without it. 
But the wall paneling is too thick and it's not as subtle of a green as I would have liked it to be. And then the doors and windows. Okay, so you've seen me fiddle around with that a million times already. I keep trying to fix it throughout the video <laughs> and that's because it upset me. The windows and door that lead to the balcony are what makes Mary's apartment special. And that had me so frustrated because just nothing worked the way I wanted it to. I needed a door that was mostly clear with a rounded top and two ornate windows and I couldn't find ones that worked. So in the end, we come back and I downloaded a CC door specifically for this build. And we get a combo that I think is as accurate as I could achieve. But in a moment, we get to what was probably my favorite part of the build, and that is the shelving that is built into the platform. The platform isn't exact either. Again, that was one of those weird TV set things that didn't translate to The Sims 4 very well. So I just improvised a bit and ended up loving how it turned out. But right now, I'm still working on the door, arranging some things next to her chair, and then re-adding the curtains I had picked out earlier. And I was quite happy with these curtains. They were very similar to the ones used in the show. Now you'll see me go pull out a couple of different items, trying to get an idea of what I wanted to use in order to achieve the built-in bookshelf. I end up placing white shelves along the top and bottom of the platform, and then at the end of the platform, I place some stairs that are as close to the color of the carpeting as possible. They're wooden though, because unfortunately we don't have carpeted stairs in The Sims 4, but oh my gosh, I would seriously love that. Now here's the fun part where I start filling in the shelves with books, though we do come back later on and give it a lot more detail. We're moving on to the living room now, which eventually changes because I was looking at a reference photo where Mary has all of her furniture moved this way for a party. And it dawned on me in the middle of doing that, that that's not how it usually is. So we rearrange it later on. Also, this is kind of funny. So I think I have the same couch as Mary in real life. You'll see behind me that I have a caramel colored couch that is identical to the dark brown one she has in the show. And mine was a hand-me-down. It started out as my grandmother's and then it went to my parents and then to me. So I don't know how old it is, but I know that it's pretty old. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Now you can see that I'm about to add more clutter to those shelves. I'm pretty sure that Mary had a record player there. So I just sort of went with that. I end up moving the records closer to the record player because before I had the them at the opposite end and that didn't make sense so I moved them underneath the record player that's just so much more convenient back to the living room now I am so sorry that I'm all over the place with this build this was my first time recording a speed build and I need to teach myself how to build for a video instead of just hopping around from space to space like I would normally do um, but now we're just grabbing a coffee table Mary has a light wood coffee table with four straight legs this one isn't quite as blocky as hers was but but it was close enough, I thought. And then I picked this orange rug that resembled the carpet I chose because I'm pretty sure her rug is made of the same material as her carpeting. So I thought this was a good match. Now we're rearranging all of the living room furniture to be a little more accurate to what it was typically like in most episodes. You'll see the little yellow end table that I mentioned earlier, and I ended up putting it beside the couch. I added some pillows. Mary had a lot of really fun and unique pillows throughout her apartment, and I just tried my best to match the colors and patterns as best as I could with what I had. Now we're starting to work on the kitchen a little bit and oh man, was this kitchen tricky. I'd say this kitchen was probably the least accurate part of the whole entire apartment because it was just so difficult to replicate. Mary's kitchen island actually matched the wood paneling on her walls, but they had a warm dark brown countertop and I just had nothing like that. <laughs> nothing that matched the shade of green on the walls and that dark brown countertop. So in the end, I went with a green island that had a wood countertop and it's okay. <laughs> Not super happy with that, but there's only so much I can do. Now, unlike the island counters, the counters inside the kitchen are actually white, which was kind of fun. But this was another part that was really kind of infuriating. <laughs> Mary's refrigerator is actually built into the cabinets and placed on an angle. Like, what? <laughs> Like, I could not do that. I tried. Lord knows I tried. But eventually I was just like, nope, this isn't going to work. And I deleted that angle and I just placed it against the wall. <laughs> 
but Mary also has more shelving built into her kitchen island. So I place more of those white shelves onto the outer part of the kitchen island, and we add some clutter later to represent some of the things she has on those shelves. And she also has one stool sitting at the island, so I placed that there too. You'll see I only added one shelf at the bottom of the island, but we go back in later and add more at the top of it as well. For this area of the kitchen, Mary has a pot rack that hangs over by her kitchen island, and it has a lot of copper on it, so we use this copper colored rack, and then added in her upper cabinets, which were white to match the counters. I think the kitchen does become a bit more recognizable once we work on adding clutter into it, and that's the goal, right? Recreations like this will never be exact, but is it recognizable? That's what's important, and I think you can tell that this is Mary's kitchen at least, so <laughs> that's something. But now we're working on picking a table to set in between the kitchen and the living area. Mary has four chairs at a wood table, and I was so happy to find chairs that are very similar in style to the ones she has in the show. I think the only big difference between these in game and the ones that she has is the cushion on her chairs are green to match the walls. As you can see, we're now looking for some clutter to add to that lower part of the shelf that's built into the island. We add a little fruit bowl onto the table, which I thought was so cute. And I ended up turning on BB.show hidden objects to try to find a particular piece of clutter. I cannot remember what I was looking for anymore, but I know I never found it. <laughs> but in the end, we add some cookware and some canisters and eventually some books because I'd imagined that she'd have some cookbooks sitting there or something. And all of those items just make the apartment feel so much more lived in and realistic. Inside the actual kitchen, Mary has a big spice rack and I couldn't find any that were close to the size yet still looked similar to what she had. So I ended up placing two of these CC pieces Pieces close together to give the illusion of a bigger spice rack. Here we're adding the top pieces of that built-in shelf. I was going to add in cereal boxes because I thought she had those, but they ended up being a little too tall. So we scrapped that idea and then that's when we start to add in all of the other items I talked about. We play around with a lot of different objects, but I'm very happy with what I settled on in the end. I thought the canisters I picked really fit the vibe with the wood top, and even the books had a little bit of a dated look to them when placed in this build. And Mary also had what looked like like a little wicker storage basket on the shelf too, so we add that in. So cute. We add the sink, and this is where I start looking for some random pieces of clutter for the platform shelving again. So I don't know if Mary has storage boxes on her shelf or not, because at this particular part of the shelf, you can't really tell what's on it in the photos I went by. You can just tell that the entire shelf is full, so I just decided to get a little creative with that part. And that's what I think is fun about builds like this, the creativity. I'm actually really excited to show you guys this portion of the build that I came up with. Later we get to the fourth wall, and that that was so much fun for me. I got to really envision what I personally thought Mary Richards would have in that portion of the apartment, which was such a blast. Oh, but as you can see here, I just put in what would be the final version of the door and windows that lead to the balcony. Again, it's not perfect, it's not exact, but I did get to the point where I was satisfied with what they looked like. I did try one more time to get the refrigerator on an angle, but it just made the counter so awkward in that corner and I just, I just couldn't do it. And this is where I was trying to play around with the sink again. Mary's faucet is actually built into the wall which is super cool, but unfortunately I couldn't replicate it, so I just chose a sink that was as close to hers as far as appearance. Adding in her yellow shelf and artwork that she has in the corner of the kitchen. This artwork is not the same as hers, but the colors in it are nearly identical, so that made me happy. The clutter in this build was challenging, but in a good way. Through the photos I went by, it's really hard to tell what certain objects are because the photos are quite low resolution, so I just tried to match the shape and color as much as possible, and that was good enough for me. Over here by the stove, Mary had a tea kettle in one of the photos I saw, so I raised it up and then alt placed it onto the burner, which I thought was a nice touch. And then she also had what were either glasses or containers. I couldn't tell what they were, so I just went with these objects in the end to represent whatever it was that she has sitting by her stove, but I know there were six of them, so that's how many I placed. She then had what looked like ketchup and mustard containers. Couldn't find anything like that, so I found these canisters. They're called the Main Squeeze canisters, and I just thought they were so cute and went with a lot of the other things we had so far, so that's what I placed to represent those. Soon we move over to the island counter. In the photo I found, Mary had a white serving tray with two glasses placed on it, and then there's this really pretty, I don't know, 
porcelain pumpkin that I'm assuming was used for cookies or candies or something like that. So I took a jack-o'-lantern that we had in the game and just turned the face around so you couldn't see it from the living area, and I think that worked really well. She also had what looked like a children's drawing at one point. I thought we had that in hidden objects from the parenthood pack, but I couldn't find it, so we just, again, placed something to represent that drawing, and then shortly after moved over to her balcony. We didn't put a whole lot of effort into her balcony. Mainly what I did was just placed railing, and then she has a bunch of pink flowers that you can see through the door. That's why it was so important for me to find a clear door so that you could see the flowers. I added some planters to make it look like the flowers were planted into them and then moved them around a little bit. I love that touch. It's such a simple detail, but it somehow really pulls the place together. At least I think so. Now in a few moments, we'll be moving on to the last two rooms, which are Mary's closet and her bathroom. This is where, again, I had to make some of my own decisions, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, we don't see a lot of Mary's closet. There's one episode where she has the doors open and you can see into it a little bit, but it's all pretty basic closet stuff. And two, we only see Mary's bathroom one time and it's at her other apartment, so it's a completely different shape from the floor plan that I used. So for the bathroom, I went with my own layout to match the floor plan, but used the one photo of her bathroom that I could find as a reference for decorating. Right now, I'm just turning this little room into an actual closet. We used some shelving and hung up some clothes and then placed a few things to represent storage in the room. The walls in the closet appear to be lighter, possibly even more of a beige than green, but it's extremely difficult to tell. So I ended up going with a wallpaper that was kind of in between a green and a beige. Now we're moving on to the bathroom and oh boy, is this bathroom funky. So I could be wrong, but I don't think we ever actually see Mary's bathroom in this apartment. There weren't any pictures of it on Google. So what I did was I used a photo from the episode Mary's Insomnia as inspiration for the bathroom, but that episode is from the last season, season seven. And Mary didn't live in this apartment anymore. She was living at a different apartment at that point in the series. But I used that bathroom as a way to get an idea of how Mary might decorate a bathroom. <laughs> But now let me tell you, I was not a fan of that bathroom set in that particular episode. It has a really weird colored tile in between a gold and a green with a matching wall color from what I could tell. And it has a brown toilet. <laughs> you probably won't believe me when I tell you, but it looks better in The Sims than it does in the show. <laughs> but Mary has a lot of plants in her bathroom as well as a lot of brown and yellow towels. Not the best color combo in the apartment, but we tried to go with it. <laughs> this room just, it's weird, but at least I tried, you know? At least I tried. <laughs> But it's still pretty fun trying to figure out what to do with that space. It looks very dated, which I absolutely love. I spend a lot of time in The Sims 4 trying to make my builds look outdated. Probably because I live in an older home, so that's what I like. <laughs> but it's hard to do that in The Sims. Everything looks so fresh and new. Now we're slowly getting into some of the fourth wall stuff that we don't ever see, where I had to use a little bit of imagination. As you can see, I placed down this funky yellow table, which was inspired by Mary's other yellow end table and I used hidden objects to find the retro TV that came with I think eco lifestyle it's something you can get from dumpster diving I believe but I sized it up a bit and then we added a door which leads out to a staircase I'm not entirely sure but there was a door in the floor plan and then we're just decorating the area by Mary's typewriter which was hard to replicate but we did our best I did go and get a little letter M from the gallery and put that up though and that was awesome but here's where we're decorating the part of the apartment that we never see. I started by placing a yellow bike by the door, and then we go and make a little reading nook for Mary. A lot of this corner was created using the Organic CC pack by Felix Andre and Harry. I will link that pack as well as any others that I can think of in the description. But here we are placing a bookshelf by the kitchen, and I found this keepsake box from that same pack, and it had an M on it, so I just had to use that somewhere in the apartment. Now we're adding pillows to this little window seat. I made the cushions match the curtains, which I thought was really nice, and I tried to tie in some more yellow through the pillows that I chose. This part of the room was so insanely fun to put together. I didn't want this part to stand out too much. I wanted it to look as natural as possible and like it belonged there. And not to toot my own horn, 
but I think I achieved that. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it, and I could totally see Mary sitting there reading a book or drinking a cup of coffee and watching the snow fall outside the window. Anyway, finally we're to the screenshot, so I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Simulation Comedy. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you did. And also, if you made it this far into the video, please leave suggestions for what you think I should build in future episodes. Just don't suggest friends. I just, I'm sorry, I, I don't like it. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching, and if you have Hulu, then you can go watch the Mary Tyler Moore Show right now, which I highly recommend doing. Dag dag!